Hello everyone and welcome back! My name is Yulia and on this channel I talk about personal growth, experiments and ways to get to know yourself better. If you're like me, you probably also have an idea that you should constantly improve, become your best self, get out of your comfort zone and so on. While this is certainly a good thing, I would like to talk about the other side of self-improvement, the ways it can actually harm you. If you're curious to know how to recognize that self-improvement actually harms you, please keep on watching. Also, I will be very curious to know if you agree with me on this one. Let me know in the comments and don't forget to like this video if you find it useful. First of all, an important disclaimer. I am not against self-improvement. I love it. I think it's important to strive to be your best self and become better than before. However, I've been in the situations myself that lead me to thinking that maybe I should just slow it down. And this is exactly what I would like to talk about in this video. I think we can all agree that anything in excessive amounts can be harmful. Let's dive into five different situations where self-improvement can become harmful. First one, not covering the basics. And here by basics I mean having enough sleep, drinking enough water, eating nutritious meals, and having enough exercises. That's something that everyone is talking about. And it's mundane, and you heard it a thousand times, but this is true. If you don't do that, you just don't have enough energy, enough resources to put into other areas of your life. So if you don't have your basics covered, well, you just are not as efficient as you can be especially when it comes to improving yourself, when you consciously put your effort into certain areas that you think need to be better. If you're in a situation when you cannot get enough sleep or enough exercise, for instance, please don't push yourself too hard. Try maybe to focus on one area or try to do your best to get, well, as much of the basics fixed first. Because if you don't have enough energy, you're just not going to be happy with the results in the areas that you're trying to improve. Number two is keeping up with the Jonesies or whoever you're following on the social media that you think is the person that you should be like. I know that self-improvement is a pretty trendy topic and I personally follow a lot of people who try to get better at something. But often these people actually focus on one thing. Say, if this is a person who is into fitness and healthy lifestyle, probably someone who may not be improving themselves in some other areas. And it's very important to keep in mind that social media can be very fake. What people are telling you uh, on their Instagram account is probably like this much of what they're experiencing in life. If you think that, oh, this person is so productive, I also have 24 hours, why can't I be like that? You may not know that perhaps this person delegates a lot. Maybe there is the whole team behind someone that you see on social media. And that actually creates an impression that this person is being so successful and can accomplish so much more than you can. What to do instead? I think it's important to check in with yourself. Is this what you need? Or do you do that because other people are doing or what looks good from the outside? Number two, anxious productivity. I am very guilty of this one. I often notice that I improve on certain things because I'm afraid that I won't be good enough, I won't be liked by others, and I won't make it otherwise. It often relates to professional life, so things that I do for a living. And in my case, as an immigrant, I always had that fear that, oh, if I'm not good enough, I might lose my job and therefore I will be deported from the country. And I had all sorts of anxiety around this. And that kept me going. Like that made me more productive. It made me try harder just for the sake of staying and trying to get the citizenship one day. Unfortunately, anxiety drove a lot of my results. To a certain extent, that applied also to my personal life. For instance, like, oh, I need to stay in good shape so that other people can like me. What to do instead? Anxiety can certainly give you a kick. That can last for some time, but this is not a sustainable behavior. The only way I see coping with that is actually talking to a therapist. There are better ways to cope with anxiety and keep your productivity at the same time. And uh, in my experience, uh, my therapist actually gave me some tools to deal with that. So I can highly recommend finding help. 
toxic work ethic. That relates to both being employed at a company or being self-employed. When it comes to companies, well, they can just promote the work ethic that is not really healthy. Say, you know that your working day is from nine to six, but unspoken rules are so that nobody actually leaves their desks at six. And people start judging you for leaving the work on time. Uh, people expect you to work overtime. People expect you to work on the weekends. You constantly get emails or messages after working hours. And that is considered normal. Well, it is not normal. And if somebody is guilt tripping you into uh, doing that, then well, probably it's, it's better to talk about that and uh, set your boundaries and say that this is not how you would like to work. Another side of that story, of course, when you are self-employed, you might also be driven by anxiety. You might be also a little bit concerned that, oh, if you don't work overtime, you may not be able to finish the project that you may not get paid, you may not get maybe a recommendation that you would like. Part of that, of course, is the organization and the company culture. Uh, however, uh, you might still think that, oh, I need to improve, I need to get better because of my professional life. And if that leads you to doing a lot of overtime, to stressing over the fact that you cannot meet the deadlines that may not be realistic in the first place, that might be a sign that something is really out of balance here. What to do instead? It's important to watch out for these situations. It can really lead to a burnout. And burnout would actually not allow you to do anything, let alone improve on like any areas of your life. So if that's happening, I think it's important to talk to someone about this. If it's work situation, talk to your colleagues, maybe to some management, to HR about how this could be changed. Express how that makes you feel, what that does to you. If that's not the case, if the company doesn't really encourage you to do that, but you still keep on doing over time, maybe that's something that you can also talk to your therapist about. The therapist here can give you some tools or methods to avoid burnout in the future. Situation number four is lack of focus. And I'm also guilty of that. I am interested in various things in, in life and I also see that you know, there's a gap, there's a gap, this could be improved, that could be improved. And that leads me to spreading myself too thin among all these areas or all these things that I think could be better. And we all know that everything can always get better. So the advice that I will give to myself, it's important to focus on one area at a time. You can give yourself a timeline, Perhaps create an experiment, and I even had a whole video about how I approach experiments. I will link it um, somewhere here. I think it's quite okay to improve on more than one area if those areas are different enough. And by that I mean, for instance, combining a cognitive activity with a physical one. Let's say learning a language and doing workouts, and not learning a language and learning how to write good texts. Ultimately, you can decide for yourself how many areas you can handle. I probably would not recommend more than two or three, especially if they really take a lot of your energy. Please keep that in mind. To sum everything up, even though self-improvement is great and you should always strive to become your better self, it's important to check whether you have enough energy, whether you're doing what you actually want and not what other people are doing, and that you have a focus in not spreading yourself too thin. Please take care and remember that you are enough. You are the most important person in your life. And your well-being is more important than your social media image, other people's opinion, or the project that you needed to finish yesterday. That was it for today. Thank you so much for watching this video. Do you agree that self-improvement can be harmful sometimes? Let me know in the comments below. I wish you a great day. Take care of yourself, drink some water, and remember, you are enough. See you next week. Bye.